Are you looking for a bit of kitchen inspiration? If you are, make sure you check out ProChefGearPlus.com. They've got aprons and chef coats and hats and spices and marinades and cookbooks and even knives. Go on, get some cool knives from them. If you want to get a 15% discount off your order of $50 or more, use discount code Kimberly from Cooking with Kimberly. Kimberly, that's K-I-M-B-E-R-L-Y. Make sure you get on out there, check out what they've got, be a champion in your kitchen. ProChefGearPlus.com. Hi everybody, I'm Kimberly Edwards from cookingwithkimberly.com and this is how you make French onion soup. That's what I'm doing tonight. So I'm going to show you how to do that. We'll put it all together and I'll show you what's going on. I'm going to use these amazing little Russian clay ramekins. They're like stoneware, they're clay pots and they're going to be beautiful in the oven. Anyways, it's kind of a really cool recipe. Let's do it! Now, you're going to use broths and stocks for a whole bunch of stuff. And why go buy it at the store if you can make it simply yourself, right? So I'm going to make an amazing recipe tomorrow with um, French onion soup in these awesome little Russian pots that I've got. Now, today I'm going to make the beef broth for this soup. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So this is how you are going to make your broth. This is how you're going to roast your bones get everything ready and get that broth ready, okay? So starting from scratch, here we go. Now, here's beef bones. I got, these are called beef soup bones, in fact. Just easy, very easy. Five big chunks of bones that come from beef. They're beef bones, they've got lots of marrow in them and that's the whole entire point. Right now I've got my oven on 400 degrees, it's preheated. Right here, I've got a baking dish. Now I'm just gonna spray it. You can grease it up if you want to, however way you want, but I just wanna make sure it's a little bit oiled up. Actually, I can leave that here. Okay, next in is my beef bones. No rhyme or reason, you just want them in there. Sit tight, I have to wash my hands. Anytime you have meat that you are working with that is raw, you're gonna wanna make sure you clean the entire area off that the meat has touched or you have touched with meat and make sure you wash your hands with warm water and soap. Use some kind of antibacterial stuff if you want to disinfect, okay? So right now, these are the soup bones. They're just in here. Next thing I'm going to do is move this. <laughs> I am going to roughly chop two carrots and two big celery stalks, okay? They're washed. I'm just going to chop the ends off. Make sure you're using nice, sharp knives so that you don't... Um, that's going for the dogs, apparently. It fell on the floor. Um, so you don't cut yourself. Uh, when you are chopping, especially things that are hard, like hard carrots or something like that, you want a super sharp knife because the more power you have to use to slice through those those um, vegetables or bones or whatever you're trying to, to chop or slice, if you're using more pressure and your knife is dull, it has the likelihood of slipping and cutting you even worse than a sharp knife would. A sharp knife, you put it where it is and it slices. Now make sure your fingers aren't in the way. But make sure you're using a nice sharp knife. Now this is a brand new chef's knife that I got. It's a Mercer Renaissance knife. Make sure you go check them out. They have them at ProChefGearPlus.com. And uh, you can use a co discount code Kimberly, K-I-M-B-E-R-L-Y for me. And you will get 15% off your order of $50 or more. Again, this is the Mercer Renaissance. It is a German steel, high carbon, no stainless steel. It's stainless steel and it's, um, it's fantastic. Nice weight. Beautiful. Anyway, I could talk all day about knives, but we're not going to do that. So I'm just going to slice these carrots into probably three pieces. Okay. I'm leaving the skins on simply because I don't really care. This is not for presentation. This is going to be boiled up into a stock and uh, it doesn't matter what it looks like. Got me? When you're using root vegetables or lots of fruits and vegetables, have a lot of their nutrients in the peel. And if you peel it off, you're wasting out, you're missing out on most of those nutrients, okay? These carrots are slippery today. So keep them on when you can. Now here's my celery, I'm doing the same thing. Even, even pieces, okay? I'm arranging them around these bones. Now these bones are gonna go in the oven for approximately 40 minutes, I would say, okay? Next thing I'm going to do is uh, slice my onion. Now I have an onion, I wanna keep it in half. I'm just gonna slice it in half. And I almost wanted to roast that way. It's going to have more of an, a chance to burn than the other vegetables, so I don't want that to happen. 
Now, when I make so soup broths or stocks, and I have onions, I like to leave the onion on, the onion skin on. It imparts nutrients, like I just said, and it also imparts a really nice color, a darker color, like especially if you're doing chicken broths. So <clears throat> I'm actually going to reserve the skins because, again, the broth doesn't the doesn't look doesn't matter. I'm straining the whole thing out anyway. I'm not putting meat or anything else that's going to stay in there. It's going to be a clear broth when I'm done. So it's going to be all strained out. Doesn't matter. I'm going to save these and I'm going to throw them in the broth to, when I am ready to throw the bones in when they're done roasting. Now, I want this to roast up though the onion. If you left the skins on the onion inside of the oven, they're going to burn up. It's you're roasting at 400 degrees, it's going to like be an inferno, okay? You don't want to do that. Take the skins off. Now I'm leaving these whole, I'm putting these together in here, face down, just so they're protected. Comes in a natural protection, leave it that way, okay? Make sure you got like that's a nice room. Okay, last thing I'm going to do, I have a little tiny piece of aluminum foil. I have two garlic cloves. I'm going to slice off just the top, just like you would if you were going to do an entire clove of garlic roasting it. Now you could do an entire clove, but I don't need this. I don't need an entire clove for this. Here puppies, you can have that too. I don't need a whole clove for that. So I'm just going to slice off the two tops, put it inside this little um, piece of foil. I'm going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil on top of these, right? A little bit of salt. I'm using a red wine sea salt today uh, in a salt grinder from um, Drogaria, red wine salt. Um, this, I got these salt and pepper actually are from Drogaria and I got them from Qualifers Foods Online. They don't carry these at my grocer. Um, you can find them at qualifers.com and they're delicious. All kinds of bang for your buck for some cool spices. If you're looking to spice up your life, that's what it is. Go buy some spice. Simple, right? Okay, so in this little piece of aluminum foil, it looks so cute. It's going to be all nestled in here. You're just going to make a nice little package, twist the top, throw it in the side, and let that roast alongside the rest of the stuff, okay? Hold these onion skins on the side if you want to keep them. Okay, next. Right. I have a basting brush. Now, you can use your hands if you want to, or you can use a basting brush. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to drizzle olive oil all over everything and I'm probably going to use my hands to toss everything up just to make sure that everything's nice and coated properly make sure those onions stay the way they should be coat the celery coat the carrots coat the onions coat those bones especially especially those bones you want it to taste good you're just using bones you don't have any meat so you want to make sure right don't touch anything with your yucky hands when in fact I'm going to wash them right now okay so that's done. Next thing I'm going to do, I have a basting brush, tomato paste, okay? You don't have to put this on at first, you don't have to put this on at all, but this is what I like to do. It just gives that little bit of extra flavor that I want on these bones. I'm only putting it on the bones, I'm not putting it on the veggies. Now this is gonna roast up, this is gonna brown nicely. They're going to taste so good, you don't want them to burn. If you see that your bones are burning and you've had it in there for so long, right? <clears throat> You don't want them to burn, turn it down, or reduce the heat, or both. Got me? You don't want them to burn. Because that will make everything really bitter, and you don't want things bitter in your soup. You don't want bitter soup, do you? I don't. Okay, these are looking lovely. Two more. Then you're going to season them up quickly, briefly. All right, that looks beautiful. Now, these um, vegetables in here, you can call them your aromatics. If you've ever heard someone say that, now you know what that means. <laughs> it just means everything's going to smell good. It's going to infuse flavors and all that good stuff. So I'm done with that, okay? Now, since I use that with my brush that it was touching the meat, make sure you only use this for this particular dish. Got me? Capiche? Do not use this again. This has been contaminated got me so if you're not going to use it for this chunk it out it's not worth the 42 cents or however much this is to you know have a problem all right so next i'm going to put the salt all over this again make sure everything's nice and coated my little carrots aren't very coated well all right we are going to crack freshly cracked pepper all over 
I'm also going to put a bay leaf in. This will be another aromatic, quote unquote. Now, check out everything in your pan in about 10 minutes to make sure that all is well and things aren't going awry because, you know, stuff like that happens. It happens. So be aware of that. And that's it. That's all. It's going in my oven at 400 degrees. It's going to do 15 minutes. I don't think it's necessary to look in time. So I'm going to look in 15 minutes and we'll see how it goes. And then uh, I'll come back when I think it's necessary for you to see something awesome. All right, everybody? Sit tight. Okay. So I'm taking this out to show you what's going down, right? Here's your beef bones. This is 20 minutes in. They look beautiful and browned. It's not burnt. And I am just going to flip them over. Girl, grab yourself some tongs. <clears throat> Don't hurt yourself. Aren't these cool? Check these guys out. You can get these. Actually, these are for a good cause. You can order them from, from a lady named Sherry. She's the bomb. And you can find them at 22qcentral.org which is actually um, an illness, a genetic illness. Check it out. Um, you'll learn something too from there. Anyways, aren't these cool? You can use them in your kitchen. They're towels and she sent me like a cool oven towel dish rack and she gave me, you know, stuff I use for my teapot and whatever. Beautifully done. She does them all custom. You can tell her the colors you like. Such a sweet lady. You'll love her story if you check her out, okay? Now I'm going to baste these again and I got rid of my brush. So I need a new brush. Thank goodness I have more than one brush in my house. Okay, so I'm gonna baste this other side, the underbelly of these guys. They're flipped over and they smell good. Everything looks good. All the veggies look nice. I'm actually gonna flip the veggies a little too. And then they're gonna go back in this oven, same temperature, same bat cave, all that good stuff. And it's gonna go back in for yet another 20 minutes and then you're good to go and done. Got me? All right. So these all look beautiful. Next, I'm losing everything today. Okay, I'm just going to flip my veggies over. Not that it's a big deal. They probably did get flipped quite a bit at this point now. All right, so all is well. Back into the oven for 20 more minutes. See you then. Okay, so it's been another 20 minutes. We're about to grab these out of the oven. And take a look. They're perfectly roasted. Nice and brown. My vegetables look gorgeous. Everything is going to make this broth so much tastier now that it's all roasted. Now you can put these things in, in without roasting them. You know, you can put the bones in just like that into your soup or your veggies, but you're gonna get a lot more flavor by roasting them. That's it, that's all. So check it out when I go ahead and do this. I'm gonna put these in a pot and put cold water on to leach out all the awesome flavors, okay? I'll be right back. All right, everybody, I'm back. Now last night, I roasted up these beef bones for this beef broth that I'm making for tonight's soup. I'm making French onion soup this evening. So I wanted a nice rich beef broth, but I didn't want to buy it. I wanted to make my own and I wanted to show you guys how to make it. Got me? So I roasted these bones. You saw what I did, okay? And now I'm going to finish this beef stock. So I have nothing in this great big pot on my stove. I'm going to put all of my ingredients that I roasted last night, which includes the beef bones, the save, the reserved onion skin, the beef bones, the vegetables. I'm going to open up my little package, my little package of roasted garlic. I'm going to squeeze that in as well, just to get that out of the shell. All right. Beautiful. It smells delicious. There's nothing like roasted garlic. Actually, I'm going to throw everything in there because it's all going to be strained. Got me? So the rest all goes in. There's onion, there's carrot, there's celery, there's bay leaves, there's some spices, etc. And that's going in. I'm also going to put some liquid inside of this, put it on top of my element on very low, and I'm going to deglaze that pan. Now, if you do it right away, see last night I just didn't have time to finish it all. This is a couple hour job to make sure that you do it properly. Now, if you want to just do it right away, it, you can deglaze the pan. I'm even going to might put some, I'm, I am going to put some red wine in here and I'm going to deglaze this pan and I'm going to pour that on top as well. But that's going to be after I put this on the stove. So hold on, I need me a towel. All right, so that's in here now. Next, this is going, you, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put cool liquid on top, okay? Cold water, cold whatever, okay? No, not whatever, but today I'm going to use a mixture of water and tea. I have lukewarm tea because we just, we drink lots of tea and sometimes it just goes cold and you make a new pot because you want, you want to be spoiled and you want to make a new pot. And so then you have all this great cold tea that you can use for baking and cooking alike. 
and that's what we're gonna do today. It's just gonna make it a little bit more flavorful, a little bit more rich in color, and um, it's just cooler than water, in my opinion. I'm also gonna add water as well. So what you want, I, I have these bones all in this pot, and you just wanna cover it up with maybe two more extra inches of liquid. So make sure everything is all totally covered. You're going to bring this to a um, simmer. You're gonna bring it to a boil, and then you're gonna turn it down to a simmer as soon as you see, you see it bubbling, right? Into this goes my tea. I'm gonna pour this on right now. And then I'm gonna put the remainder is going to be water. That tomato paste that's roasted on top of those bones is going to be beautiful and impart such great flavors into there. All right, the rest is gonna be water and then we're gonna talk about some spices, okay? Into the pot goes the water. This is uh, filtered water. You don't have to use filtered water if you don't have it. I use it because that's what we have that comes out of our tap here. First osmosis water. All right. Okay, so now we're gonna put in some spices. I'm gonna put in a couple more bay leaves just because it's nice and fresh. They're not all roasted and, you know, worn out. In goes the bay leaves. Next. This is real cooking. That happens all the time to me, and I'm sure it happens to you at home too. Anyway, I'm also going to put in some peppercorns. Now, I would usually put in plain pepper, quote unquote, plain, normal, regular peppercorns, but today I'm going to use these really cool peppercorns that I got from Qualifirst Foods. It's qualifirst.com online. And this is from Epicurial, and they are Comet's Tail Peppercorns. They're super cool because usually peppercorns are harvested, and they're harvested without these little stems, but these comet's tail, that's why they call them comet's tail. These comet's tails are harvested like this because they've got lots of extra flavor in there, lots of yumminess in those stems. So these aren't like normal peppercorns. If you haven't seen my review of these, go check them out on, on the channel. But they're not like the typical peppercorns, okay? Typical quote unquote. These have nuances of flour and pine and camphor and clove. It's also been likened to the flavor of allspice. So bear that in mind before you use it for just anything, okay? The reason I'm gonna use these today is because when I make soups and stews, and my mom made it like this, and my mom, her mom did, it's been passed down through generations. Don't ask me why we do it. This is why we, this is what we do in our family. We usually put one or two cloves in a soup or a stew just to give a little bit of extra it's that little extra flavor that makes me know it's from us, from our home. <laughs> so today I'm going to experiment. Instead of set, putting that clove in, I'm going to use these because they do have that little bit of flavor that I'm kind of looking for. So in, and they're bigger than my peppercorns I've been using. So I'm going to use probably six of these bad boys in there. Now, what else do I need in there? Nothing else really. I don't think I'm putting anything else in there. Um, I might put a little bit of salt in, which is a good idea. Let's put some salt. And I'm going to use my Malden sea salt flakes here. These are awesome. When these are formed, they're like flakes. They're so cool. When these are formed, when the salt flakes are formed, they form in little pyramids that grow up like little pyramids, right? And so then they come in these really cool shapes and you squish them and you crunch them as you're cooking with them. They're very aesthetically pleasing for the home chef or a gourmet chef because it's just fun to play with and it feels right and you you get a better feel of when you're cooking. I don't know, I don't know how else to explain it. Um, but this is also great stuff for soups and stews and stuff like that. This is from Malden, and Malden doesn't put any extra preservatives or anything like that inside of their salt. In this salt, anyway, I don't know about the rest of their salts or if they have other salts, but this salt they don't. And it's very pure and it has a very beautiful flavor, and you can get them like this. Again, go to Qualfirst, they have everything there, qualfirst.com. Now, this is on a medium-high heat. I don't know if I said that earlier, but it's on a medium-high heat, and it's just going to go... Um, until it starts bubbling, bubbling. And then I'm gonna turn it down to like a medium heat, medium low heat. I want it just to simmer. This is gonna go for maybe two hours. I might even let it go three, okay? I don't want it to be really crazy boiling because I don't want all kinds of, mom will say, blephismas all up in that soup. I want it to be as clear as I can. I mean, it's not a big deal if it's not, I'm not cooking for the queen tonight, you know what I'm saying? 
But uh, it's nice to be aesthetically pleasing as well and maybe not have really cloudy broth. Because if you keep letting that boil, 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 it's breaking up those veggies and little particles and things and that's not what you want. You just want it to be nice and clear and flavorful. The reason you're starting with that cold water, you don't want to start with warm or hot water because you want that cold water, when it heats up, it starts leaching out the flavor of those ingredients. And that's what you want for a stock. You want to get all those flavors out of those ingredients so that your water your liquid is what's flavored with all the deliciousness, right? So that's what we're doing. Into the pot, I'm gonna let it start boiling and we're just gonna let it simmer down. Now, it's going to reduce in, in volume of water, okay? It's gonna evaporate, you can't help it, it's just gonna happen. Make sure you keep adding a little bit by little bit, okay? A little bit by little bit. Make sure it still stays covered so that you're really getting a good, good simmer and uh, then at the end, you can soup every, stew everything out, take everything out, right? You strain everything. And then you can reduce it if you want. You concentrate the flavors a little bit more. You can reduce it just the liquid by itself instead of letting it just boil crazy with all the ingredients in like I just told you not to do. Got me? So we'll be back in a little while. After a while, I don't know, maybe a couple hours, and you'll see what it looks like, okay? Hi, everybody. All right, we're back. And this has been going for, I would say, hmm, three hours or so. It smells awesome. It's tasty. I did a taste test in the whole nine and re-seasoned it with my Drogaria salt and pepper. Um, I forgot to tell you, I did not get those at my grocer. If you are looking for those, I did a couple of reviews on them. Um, I got them at Qualifirst Foods. That's qualifirst.com online. Um, they're super fast. Shipping and all good stuff. You can find all kinds of imported delicious things there. Go check them out. Anyway, so this has been going for that long. Now I've got all this stuff in here that I don't want in there. Okay, And also I have a layer of the fat okay so the fat is all risen to the top and what I'm going to do is I just have another another pot equal, equally sized or so I have a colander like a strainer okay like a mesh one and I'm going to strain that into the other pot okay so you're gonna see me do it be careful because it could be hot if you want to be very safe do it when it's cold or cool down all right so that's all that other stuff I don't need this anymore all right, so now I've got all this stuff that I don't need either. So I need a bowl. Hold on, sit tight. I'm going to bring this back. All right. And that can be discarded. I won't be using that again. Now, now I have this problem of the, the layer of oil on the top, the fat. Okay, the grease that rises to the top. So you're just going to take a, like a flat spoon, you can even use a ladle for it, and you're just going to skim along the top like that, just so letting a little bit of the liquid, because the fat is always at the top, it rises, right? So you're just going to skim the top, get as much of that fat off as you can that you don't want in all your soup, right? Okay, I'm back. Now that took a little while, but it's going to be well worth the effort, because check this out, this is all fat, right? That's not what you want to take in. That's not the fat that you want anywhere on your body, I'm sure. Anyhow, this now I'm going to pour into this clear measuring cup so you can see roughly how much I have. And so I know how much I have. And so you can see the pretty color. Right. And it goes. All right, so that is, that's about nine cups. Nine cups of stock, okay? That came from five, five beef soup bones. So actually, what the um, package said. So that's what we've got here. It smells awesome. It has a little bit of a shimmer on top. Some of the fat that I just didn't get, and that's okay. I'm I'm cool with just a little bit on there. But hey, look how much we got out, right? That's like wow. So now that's how you make beef stock, and I'm about to make some French onion soup with this. So. On my stove, I have a large frying pan, and I'm putting it on low heat, just to start heating up a little bit, with two tablespoons of some nice olive oil. Beautiful. So I'm just going to let that heat up quickly while I am going to slice these up. Now, the key to slicing veggies is using a very sharp knife, in my opinion. So make sure that your knife is nice and sharp. Make sure you wipe off your knife afterwards so that you have no extra particles there, no, you know, metal particles. OK, 
Okay, I'm taking, I'm gonna use two onions. I'm only doing a couple servings of this, like two or three, and that's what I'm doing. So I only need like two onions. Now, when I do French onion soup, I like to do my onions in rings. Okay, so they're nice, long, stringy. That's what makes it fun to me, I think. So I remember eating this as a child and it was one of the most fun soups ever. Plus it had all cheese and you know how kids love cheese. Now I'm going to remove these outer skins because I don't want that or need it. I can put it in broths and things like that to darken the color, the onion skins, believe it or not. Make sure you soup skin them out though. But they impart a really nice, rich color and a nice flavor to your broths, okay? Cool, it's a nice little trick my mom taught me. Okay, so my skin's gone. Now I'm just going to slice this onion into huge rings. And that's why it's important to use a sharp knife so you don't slip and cut yourself. The more pressure that you have to use with your knife, if it's dull, the more likelihood you are to slip and cut your finger. Okay, so use a sharp knife. Now this is a Mercer Renaissance knife. This is from ProChefGearPlus.com. Make sure you check them out. They have awesome um, cooking stuff, cooking equipment. Um, if you use the discount code Kimberly, you'll get 15% off your order of $50 or more. Now I'm just slicing these as uniformly as possible into huge rings, okay? And I'm going to do that for both onions and we'll be right back. Okay, so my onions are done and I haven't cried. I don't mind cutting onions, it's not that bad. Okay, you may think that this is a heck of a lot of onions and I'm only cooking for two people, but when these caramelize up and they lose most of this moisture, you're gonna have like this much left after it's all like caramelized and beautiful and pretty. So that's gonna be beautiful and just enough to fit in both of these, I would think. This is my estimate, so. These are two nice, large white onions. You can use any kind of onion you want. You can use yellow onions, you can use red onions, whatever experiment you love it, okay? So into my pan go these all of these onions except for one that's gonna fall on the floor. And you're going to stir these around and I'm gonna explain what's gonna happen with these guys. Now this is on the low heat. This is a medium low heat right now. I'm actually gonna probably turn it up to medium until this pan is fully at the right temp. So check it out. Low and slow, that is the key. To caramelize means you are getting the sugars to brown and make it all caramely as you slow cook these this, this vegetable, right? Onions have a lot of sugar in them, and when they get cooked and when you let it go, they get all nice and sweet, okay? And they turn brownish, and, and it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. They're not so raw and abrasive. Um, they're actually very mellow and nice. They don't hurt your stomach as much. They're not, they don't wreck your breath and all that good stuff, okay? So this is a great way to do onions if you're not crazy about all the things that onions carry with it, like bad breath, okay? Caramelize them, make sure that you go long enough. This could take up to an hour, like just know that and relax. I know it's onions and you're gonna be like, oh my goodness, it's just onions, but the actual dish is called French onion soup. It's the entire point is to get your onions proper properly cooked and gorgeous and ready to go, fully caramelized, okay? So into this pan, I have just the olive oil, those two onions, and I'm gonna put salt and pepper. Now I'm gonna use um, really cool pepper and really cool salt. These are from Drogaria. And uh, this is a four pepper mill, and this is a red wine sea salt mill. It actually has red wine. The salt is like purpley, very, very cool, okay? And into here goes my pepper, and that's it. You're going to re-season at the end anyway, but that's just gonna get it started. The salt is going to start leaching some of the liquid out from those onions, and you're going to be a happy, happy. So get ready, sit tight, put a movie on, and stir them, you know, you don't have to sit here the whole time and babysit them, but make sure it stays on low. You keep moving them around, and they're gonna be nice and golden brown. You'll see what they look like in a little while. Hi everybody, all right, so we're back now. And we've been doing this for about an hour, coming back, stirring a little up, making sure it's on a nice low heat, browning nicely and all that good stuff. This is done, turn that off. This is done now and I have a beautiful amount for some French onion soup that I'm about to make too. So make sure you tune into that next recipe video and you'll see how to make the French onion soup and you'll be able to also search how to make the beef stock that I use for the French onion soup. Got me? All right. So these look awesome. I'm going to show you what they look like. Hi, everybody. All right. So we're back now. And we've been doing this for about an hour, coming back, stirring a little up, making sure it's on a nice low heat, browning nicely, and all that good stuff. 
this is done. Turn that off. This is done now, and I have a beautiful amount for some French onion soup that I'm. So these look make. awesome. I'm going to show you what they look like. This is what I mean. They're nice and gold and brown. Okay, not burnt. You don't want them to get burnt, charred, anything like that. That's why you want to go nice, low, and slow. That's very important. If you burn onions, they get really, really bitter, and you're going to be so miserable. It's going to be really tasteless, bad, taste, bad. Not tasteless, but terrible taste. Like, you really don't want to do that. Go low and slow. I'm sorry it takes so long. I mean, you can add some wine in here if you want. Let it reduce in there with the, with the onions as you go. You can also put a pat of butter in there if you want to. This guy's really... All right, everybody. So now we've got the beef stock ready, right? The homemade beef stock. It's the bomb. Make sure. Then you've got the caramelized onions. These are awesome. There's two large caramelized onions. That's how much it gives you. It goes right down from a great big pan to like that much, okay? That's what I'm talking about. It took about an hour to do, right? So now I've got these really cool little clay pots, right? There's stoneware and they're Russian. I just washed them. Um, there's stoneware in there from Russia. They're from, what is that company called? You forget, I did a review on it, go check it out. Anyways, they're from a, a website called fromrussia.com. That's really all you need to know. And look up the ramekins. These are called clay ramekins. Um, but I like, they're like little pots and they have little lids, aren't they awesome? Anyways, if you don't know, I have a Russian, Ukrainian, German background. My family was German and Ukrainian, but the German part of my family lived in Russia in a small village called Kontinyskalt, and then they immigrated over to Canada. So we have a lot of soul food recipes that we, our, our soul food recipes that we cook, right? Um, and this is very traditional, so I got them. We, I've never cooked in them. My mom's never cooked in them, and mom doesn't remember grandma either, but it's traditional, and I want to know about my heritage, and so that's what we're going to do. But tonight I'm not making, you know, a traditional thing. This is French. It's French onion soup, but this is going to be perfect in here. This slow cooks nice and slow, keeps all the nutrients in, okay? So now, this is super simple to do. My, my beef stock is actually cold, and I have a reason for it. My caramelized onions are not hot. They are cooled down, and I'm about to put them in an oven. My oven is going to be at 350 degrees. Got me? Okay. Yes, I do have it there. There you go. Make sure. So I'm going to put them in cold because I want the, the flavors to slowly heat together and slowly, you know, all the flavors start to marry and get together. If you do it like hot, hot, it's just like, what's the point? You just plunked everything together and it didn't really go together. Everything's kind of very separate flavors. You got me? I want everything to be like happy, go lucky in there. So this is what we're going to do. Simple stuff. I'm going to put this in here. It's going to be really nice and hot. Make sure you allow for a tiny bit of expansion. I mean, not much. It's not a ton of space in there, but it's a perfect portion of French onion soup, in my opinion, anyway. So the onions are going in. I'm just going to put equal parts in each clay pot. I think they're so cute. All right, so there's onions in both pots. Got me? Next, I'm just going to pour in the beef stock. Now, you don't want to put way too much because make sure you're allowing. You have to put some, you're going to put some bread in there, float it on top, right? After this is all done, after it's all heated up and married and everybody's happy, you're going to put some bread on top, some toast, and then you're going to put some cheese on top and melt it and put it back in the oven under the broiler. Oh, come on. So make sure you leave a little bit of room for that, okay? Here we go. I'm going to put the lid on these guys, too, because I want everything to just be happy and stay together. I don't want it to evaporate too much. All right, so I'm going to move them to the center. Now, these bad boys have this really cool little fork thing that it came with. How cool is that? Hold on, I gotta move this stock. See how much extra stock I've got? Now you can freeze that, you can put it in the fridge if you're gonna use it like within the week or two. You can put it in the freezer and you can, you know, bring it out in big chunks or you can put it in like ice cube trays and pop them out for little tiny bits that you need for sauces or something on the stove top, right? So this little thing goes like this, boom. So when it's hot, you're gonna use a hot pad that I put away. Pretend I have a hot pad. A hot pad, and you're gonna stick that there, and then you can transfer it. 
very carefully and gently, and put it down and do like that and serve it on someone's plate at the table. Isn't that beautiful? I think they're so cute. Mom, I'm so excited. Good, I think they're really beautiful. Oh, they're cute. I can't wait to do all kinds of stuff in these. Okay, so into the oven they go. Ready? I would say that's gonna go about 30 minutes, and then I'm going to show oh, you the yes. rest. These look fantastic. Fabulous. They're bubbling and boiling. Now I've got like two of the French onion soup, and then I did another one for someone else of something else. Got me? All right, so now I'm just going to handle the French onion soups, which are in the front. Now, what I've done is I took pieces of bread like this, <laughs> and then I cut the holes in. Where's my thing? Anyway, it was a measuring cup. Here it is. I have lots of projects going on. So I just took that measuring cup, cut it out, and it's the exact same size as those beautiful little ramekins got me. So now, be very careful because these are super hot. Don't let them fool you. Don't let them fool you at all. It's bubble, bubble, toil and trouble in there. It is so pretty. It's bubbling. It smells crazy good, okay? Okay, so I put these in the oven just to crisp up nicely, okay? On top, I'm going to float them. There we go. Boom, boom, okay? Now I've grated up some just mozzarella cheese, okay? And I'm just going to flood the top. Now if you want to, with that bread, you can butter it. You can go ahead and... Uh, Rub some um, fresh garlic on that and make it garlic bread-like. Now pile that cheese on because that's what's the beautiful part about French onion soup to me. At least when I was a kid, that was like the most exciting thing on the planet <laughs> was French onion soup and all that ooey gooey cheese that just goes everywhere, everywhere. Now that looks fantastic. I'm going to leave this open to finish roasting or whatever you want to call it, broiling. I'm going to put it under the broiler quickly, and I'm going to let that just get all browned and bubbled. Well, you know, golden brown. Ready? Here we go. Egg in the oven. On to broil. All right. Here color they come. Ha-ha. Heavenly. Heavenly, heavenly, heavenly. Now, you could have also sprinkled some Parmesan cheese on the top if you wanted to, and that would have been very nice, or you can do it now. Whatever, whatever. That would have been a very nice touch, and I should have thought of that. Anyhow, they look so cool. I want to, like, pick one up and try and show you. Look, Mommy. Look at the pot. They're all bubbling and sizzling. I want to use the little fork thing for you, but I couldn't tilt it. So there we go. Be very careful with them. They're super hot and delicious and smell amazing. And I'm just going to put it on a plate like this if I was to serve it at, like, a dinner party. Put it on the plate like this. And put the little lid on like this, like a jar. Come on, dude. That's how you make French onion soup in one of these cool stoneware ramekins. There you go. Sowing my old oats and my old air heritage. There you go. Mom, are you excited? I can't wait. Yeah. I'm hungry. All right, everybody. That's how you make French onion soup. I hope you make sure you check out fromrussia.com. Grab some of these guys, they're really versatile, super cool, work just like I thought they would. Love them, gotta get some. Alright everybody, that's it, that's all. Follow me on Twitter at Cooking with Kim E with a capital E. I hope you like the fan page, it's Facebook.com slash Cooking with Kimberly. My shows are on YouTube.com slash Cooking with Kimberly. And uh, my site is CookingWithKimberly.com. That's it, that's all. Be a champion in your kitchen. Be delicious soon. Bye.